Today's video is a little bit special to me in the sense that I'm gonna show you a yard last year that I took on that I, I did a transformation video, but the yard was was looking really bad and, and I didn't get to show you kind of the finished product. And I'm not saying it's totally finished today, but sometimes what happens is I pick up a yard in the summer or late spring and, and you get rid of a lot of weeds and it's looking a lot better, but then fall hits and the grass turns brown and it doesn't, uh, you don't get to see that the satisfaction of a, of a nice green lawn. So I'm back the following April and it's not as green as it will be uh, probably a month from now, but I can show you what the yard looks like and do a little flashback segment of what it looked like last year so you can see the transform product here. Today's video is sponsored by Graham Spray Equipment. You'll see my Graham spray rig in the background. If you need a spray rig for your business, go to GrahamSC.com or give those guys a call. This Graham rig, I tell people it's the most ROI I've had on any piece of lawn care equipment, made a return on investment. For what I, I paid for it to what it makes me uh, in, in profit is unbelievable. So uh, very reliable and they can com customize a rig for you. So if you need a rig, give the guys at Graham a call. All right, let's show you the lawn. And um, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the flashback first. Let me show you this lawn from last year, kind of the process I was going through and then show you what it's looking like uh, this year. All right, so here's the story. Usually when I get a rough looking yard, it's in the springtime and it's a little bit better time, honestly, in some ways, I don't know. But this one called in the middle of the summer. Sometimes when they call in the middle of summer, uh, I'll actually talk them into like, let's just wait till the fall. Let's let the winter kill off some of these weeds. Let's put out our fall pre-emergent. But on this particular one, I thought, let me try to take some action this summer and maybe we can get a, a decent transformation before the end of the growing season. Now I'm in Alabama, it's hot, and I wanna show you the weeds in this lawn. And it, fortunately it's a small lawn, it's got some troublesome weeds, but let's take a look at it and see what we've got to work with. Now I came over here yesterday to look at it and give them a price, and I already take care of this neighbor's yard, so that's a good thing for me. But you'll see, uh, and yesterday it, the grass wasn't mowed, but it, somebody came by and mowed it yesterday, so that was great. Uh, I'm looking at the weeds here, and we've got Lespediza, this big uh, mat here. You got, looks like some Dichondra, that little lily pad thing. At least that's what I, I believe it is. You also got a lot of crabgrass. Now, I told the customer, I said, listen, the crabgrass, we're probably going to have to just let it die off and uh, let the winter kill it. We'll put our pre-emergent out next year, early in the season, and try to get ahead of it. But I've actually had a breakthrough in some knowledge since then, so I may actually try to control some of it. This is a big clump of Dallas grass, perennial weed, very difficult to control. Got white clover mixed in here with it. That should be pretty easy to knock out. Over here, we've got a little bit of a drainage issue. We've had to have a lot of water, but I asked the customer, said, yeah, it kind of stays wet in this area a lot. So we've got some Kalinga mixed in here and uh, just a lot of weeds in the yard. Now, again, fortunately, it's a small yard. Uh, this one does have Virginia buttonweed. So what I want to do on this yard is I want to spray a, a blanket application to try to knock out most of the uh, broadleaf weeds in the lawn and maybe suppress some of the sedges. Now I've got a product mixed up in the tank already called Surge. I typically use Surge as a dove weed control product, but since I already got it in the tank, I'm going to go ahead and spray that on this lawn. I think it's gonna dominate the clover. I think any broadleaf weed, and then some of the, well, I say any, I mean, it, it maybe get some suppression on uh, Virginia buttonweed, things like that. But anyway, it's gonna clean up a lot of stuff with this one application of Surge. And I'm part of this Facebook group, and I was reading some information uh, today about Dallas grass, about uh, broom sedge, that's another weed I can show you real quick. This weed right here, broom sedge, is very difficult to kill. And I had actually talked to the customer. I said, listen, would you be okay if I came in here with glyphosate and just spray the little clumps of broom sedge and the big clumps of douse grass? I said, it's gonna make some brown spots, but I think being it's summertime, I think it'll fill back in over the course of the summer. And maybe by the time we get into fall, you'll have your yard looking good again, except with the exception of the crabgrass still uh, hanging around. But by then it wouldn't be growing that much. And it's not tons of crabgrass. Anyway, that was my plan. She agreed to I said, yeah, that's fine. If that's what you need to do to get rid of it, let's just do that. Well, I got to reading uh, this morning in one of these Facebook groups I'm in with a lot of professional lawn care people. And one guy suggested using Tribute Total and Sulfetrazone or Dismiss at the high rates to control broom sedge and Dallas grass. 
I'm going to try that today. I've decided to change my mind. Instead of spraying it with glyphosate, which is what I was going to do, I'm going to try this combination. And that would be awesome if it does uh, control the weeds. And I'm just going to try this in a Bermuda lawn. And I'm okay if I get a little bit of discoloration in the grass. And it, maybe it may take multiple applications. I don't know. But if it'll knock out those two weeds in the middle of summer, that would be fantastic. So we're going Tribute Total and Sulfitrazone at the high rate and going to spray the Dallas grass and the broom sedge. And I think I'm, while I've got it, I might as well go ahead and try it out on the crabgrass and see what it does on those as well. The surge should take care of most of the other weeds, including give me some suppression on the sedges. And then I'm going to fertilize the yard today. This is an 1819 blend I've got from Harold's and it's usually what I use for my centipede lawns. But considering it's already July, you can see there 181. One nine. Since it's already July, I'm going to just use this because I don't need to pump quite as much nitrogen to this lawn as I would if I was fertilizing in April or May. So I think by doing this, we should be able to get some quick nutrients into this lawn that's been neglected for years. And hopefully uh, any damaged part or anywhere there was weeds that, that gets cleaned up, they'll let that Bermuda grass get better color, but also fill in some of those thin areas where there was a lot of weed pressure. The other thing, I picked up one of these little handy soil testers, and I don't know how accurate they are. I got this off of Amazon, and I did this in another video, and I actually had it set on the wrong little setting over here. I had it on nutrients instead of pH. So I've got it on the right setting now for pH, and you see the pH is about five and a half. So that's not terrible on a lawn that's been neglected. Now we'll put lime out on this lawn uh, in, the, in the wintertime, usually in November or something like that. I guess that's technically late fall. Uh, put lime on this yard to help at least maintain the pH, if not increase it a little bit. So let's take care of these steps today. Start spraying, start fertilizing, start spot treating, and then we're going to check back and see if we can't get this thing transformed as soon as possible. I already put my chameleon in there, as I've declared, as the international sign of lawn quality. That's my yard sign by Chad with spray signs. But anyway, got that thing stuck in the yard because I'm expecting people to see the transformation. Sometimes you say, well, don't put your yard sign in a terrible looking yard. I was like, what? Well, listen, they can see that it was terrible when I started on it and see that it was transformed and they want to know who, who was able to make that happen. Now, just so you know, I am going to go spray the backyard too. We'll show you the backyard uh, on the results, but no need to show that in my opinion on this video. So let me, no need to show you me spraying the backyard. I'm going to do the same thing I just did the front yard. It's a tiny backyard. Let me go spray that and then we'll fertilize the front yard and then we'll do some spot treating on those Dallas grass and broom sedge clumps. I got the lawn sprayed, now let's spread some fertilizer. Another thing I was gonna mention, I, I was talking to the guy who was mowing the grass yesterday and he said he's also gonna do a little landscaping on this. He's taking out these rocks, replacing some shrubs. So I think we're gonna get a little, little landscaping makeover on the front, maybe not a total makeover, but that should help a long way with our yard transformation here. Even though somebody else is doing the work, I'll, uh, that'll make it a better transformation for the finished project here. All right, I'm gonna spot treat the weeds. I've got the Tribute Total and Dismiss mixed up in this sprayer. This is a battery powered backpack. I actually got on clearance at Walmart. I think it was like on Christmas Eve or something. So don't judge, the thing actually works pretty good. We're gonna spray uh, this, the tough weeds with that and see what kind of results we can get from it. I'm optimistic.
I'm gonna walk back here in the bag just to show you what the back looks. So when it turns out looking great one day, hopefully you'll believe me on what it used to look like. Again, yesterday the grass wasn't cut and it looked looked a lot worse. Yeah, I don't know, again, if that's dichondra or what, what you call that. There's a lot of it. I'm hoping something will kill it. Uh, I don't know exactly. But this got a good bit of the broom sedge back here. Bermuda's a little thin, some clover, things like that. So here's the backyard. Hopefully we'll get it cleaned up. I'm gonna finish spot treating. We'll check back on this yard soon, see what kind of results we can see. Back out here for another checkup. Been about five weeks since I did the initial application. Let me show you around. Well, first off, I wanna notice the landscaping. I didn't do that, but another guy came in and re-landscaped. I like those cone flowers and I thought he did a really good job. What I wanna show you is the yard, the Bermuda grass definitely looks like it's filled in. The one overwhelming weed we're still dealing with is the crabgrass. And I'm just gonna try to walk you through this lawn as I'm walking through it as a, a lawn care professional. So I sprayed it, got rid of a lot of the broadleaf weeds, but the crabgrass in the middle of summer is just very hard to get rid of. And that's what we're still left with. And it's got a lot of it, unfortunately. So what I did today was I sprayed it with certainty and Celsius. That's not gonna kill the crabgrass, but it's, it's kind of a general mix I'm using a lot of times in the warmer weather and it'll keep the crabgrass suppressed for a little while and when we get to the fall the crabgrass is going to start growing as much and it will die out when we get some cold weather so it's honestly probably going to be next year for this yard it looks really good but i want to carry this video out until the next application probably late september come back and show it with the crabgrass not is growing as much and show you um, what it looks like then and unfortunately I'm going to wrap it up then and not carry it on to next year. But I have no doubt that this yard now with just the crabgrass is going to look great next year. If the program continues, we put a pre-emergent down early next year, January, February. And I think we'll have a great looking lawn. I want to show you one other thing that I was seeing in this lawn. We'll take a look at the back. So again, overwhelming, just crabgrass is the main thing. The other weed I saw, I saw today was the broom sedge. And it's a tough one. So I sprayed it with a product called Blindside. It may take two applications, but I think I can get rid of it using the blind side. But um, I, there's some more broom sage. So as we walk into the backyard, obviously the grass is looking significantly better than it did on the first application. Putting that uh, application of surge on it has knocked out a lot of broadleaf weeds. Got the Bermuda grass filling in with the fertilizer. And uh, overall, just happy with how it's looking. So we're gonna check back soon in the fall and see what it looks like then. I want to give an update on this lawn and this may be the final update for this video. I'm not sure if I'll come back and do another update or not. And I thought about this, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna show this lawn and it's not perfect yet. I wanted to transform an ugly lawn and it's still sort of ugly. But I thought there's actually a lesson to be learned in that. So let me show you the lawn and we're gonna talk about what we can learn looking at this lawn. The time frame of this last update here is late September. And I don't even remember when we started, but let's take a look and see what it looks like now. Now, if you remember, somebody changed out the landscape and improved that. And here's the grass. We're gonna get a closer up look at it and I'm gonna show you what I'm dealing with. Now, what I did today was spray my fall pre and post emergent combination. So I'm using Spectacle Flow, 2,4-D, Metzl, Furon, Simazine. I mean, I just put all kinds of stuff on here. And the Bermuda grass has slowed down. We're gonna take a look at the back because I think it significantly improved as well. So there you have it. I mean, no, nothing award winner. I'm not really worried about the color because it's starting to fade out anyway as we move closer and closer to fall weather and not growing as much. But as you get down here closer, you think, well, it looks okay. I mean, it looks better than it did for sure. But I'm actually encouraged, and let me just show you kind of my perspective on what I'm looking at when I look at this lawn. I think we talked about before the crabgrass and the amount of crabgrass that was in this lawn. It's very difficult to kill in the middle of summer. So let me show you that. The crabgrass finally stopped growing, but you can see this little bit lighter colored, brighter green grass in here. Still a lot of crabgrass in there. But I'm not worried about that. I'm not trying to kill it because thankfully when the weather is about to cool off in our area, and this crabgrass is gonna get zapped this winter. And then when I put my pre emergent out next year, Hopefully, almost all that's gonna be gone. And there's plenty of Bermuda. So what I'm encouraged about is, yes, the Bermuda spread and filled in. I mean, it's having to compete with the crabgrass, so it's not everywhere, but there's plenty of Bermuda grass here. Now, what other weeds are left besides the crabgrass? The one I keep seeing is 
one weed that's still hanging around is the Dallas grass. Now I've been working on that and spraying it and it'll become really obvious as we get in the winter, the crabgrass dies out and the Dallas grass will still be there and still be obvious. And I may be able to work on it with Tribute Total or Glyphosate, a lot of different products I can use to try to beat it back. And I think we've got some of it uncontrolled, but you can see this is Dallas grass where that there is crabgrass. So that's gonna go away. The Dallas grass is a perennial. I need to try to eliminate it. The other thing I still see in here is this weed right here and this broom sedge. Now it's been cut off so it's not as standing up as tall, but I'm continuing to pound this broom sedge with Blindside, which is a good product for it. Now it may take multiple applications, but over time, I think I'm gonna be able to get it under control and that's something I'm gonna continue to deal with. So when I look at a lawn like this, I'm not like, wow, there's still so many weeds. I'm looking at them like, yay, the Bermuda's made an improvement. The crabgrass is about to go away. I'm left with, with Dallas grass and broom sedge, which I'm gonna to continue to hammer on this winter. And next year, I'm gonna have a lot cleaner slate to start with. And I've, I just put my fall pre emerging out to keep a lot of your cool season weeds out. So, I mean, it made a tremendous amount of progress, but I want you to take this for encouragement. You notice this video, this was not a, a transformation that happened in two weeks. I don't know if I've been on this yard for two or three months now, several applications, and you see what it looks like. It's not perfectly turned around. But I think next year, this yard's gonna look so much better. Now, if I'd have started on this yard in, in February of this year, I could have got ahead of that crabgrass and made it look a whole lot better, but I'm okay with that. We've made a lot of progress, customers sticking with me, and the the yard is well on its way to looking great next year. So you gotta have a plan. You gotta stick with a plan, use the right products, know what you're doing, take care of those tough weeds you need to, and then let winter take care of the crabgrass for you, at least in my area, and that's what we're doing, and I'm happy with the results. Hope the video has been informative to you to see kind of the process and the thoughts and the products that I'm using to transform a lawn. All right, so you can see the yard was in rough shape and kind of walked you through what I did to the yard. And now let's look at it today and I'm gonna to talk to you about what I'm continuing to do in this process. All right, here it is. And you may be thinking, Jason, I mean, this thing's not gonna win any awards. Well, again, it's late April, it's not June and, and the uh, Bermuda grass really likes the hot weather and it's not a perfect yard but it's looking significantly better than it did before. Now let's see what weeds are still there. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, I see one little, one little field matter plant here. Still got a little bit of Dallas grass hanging around, which sometimes is the toughest one to kill. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna spray that with. And here is a, uh, a broom sedge plant. I use blindside on that. Of course, they did redid the landscaping, which made a huge difference from the initial application. Let's see what the back looks like. And these backyards don't get as much sunlight, so sometimes they're a little, little thin in some areas. Bermuda grass likes full sun. Got nut sedge popping up. Still got a little bit of, still got a little bit of a uh, broom sedge back here. But in general, and and thinned out over here, but. In general, significant improvement from a weaker control perspective. And I think this grass will thicken up over the course of the summer as we continue to put fertilizer to it. So let's talk about today what we need to do this lawn. And as a side note, I've been doing the neighbor's yard for several years, you can see it. It's pretty much weed free and, and, and looking uh, better. It's been mowed as well. So the Dallas grass and broom sedge are our main culprits here. I'm spraying Spectacle Flow, which can help with like some of the summer weeds we're gonna be dealing with, Kalinga and things of that nature. And I'm putting Change Up and Metsulfuron in. That's a combination I use that'll pretty much knock out just about any broadleaf weed in the yard, including that field matter that we just saw a while ago. Now, what about the two tough weeds? Well, three actually. There's nut sedge in the yard. There's also uh, broom sedge, which is not a sedge, which is confusing. And then there's also Dallas grass. So I, I keep a lot of these little two gallon tanks on, on my truck here. Uh, for sedges and broadleaf, I mean, really for about near anything, uh, except for broom sedge. I use this Celsius and Certainty combination a lot during the summer. For broom sedge, I use Blindside, and I've just got it written here, but uh, it mix up, that is the name of the product. Just trying to teach you some of the name of the products. And for Dallas grass, the, the Celsius Certainty is a good combo, but the, the best combo I know of is Tribute Total and Dismiss. And so if I put Tribute Total and Dismiss on, on the Dallas, it's gonna really beat it up. It may take two applications, it may even, uh, discolor the grass a little bit, but I don't know of a better combination on a Bermuda lawn 
um, to help get rid of douse grass, uh, apart from the, uh, I, I should say legal products. The, the illegal ones probably do work a little better. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna spray it. We've got the uh, broom's edge, got douse grass, try to get rid of those. I've already fertilized it. I'll be fertilizing this yard again in about six weeks from now for a second time. And doing that should uh, continue to improve the yard, you know, but anyway, just wanted to be able to come back and show you a yard that we did a video on last year and see that it is looking better. Still not perfect, depending on the type of weeds and the situation it can take longer to transform others. Uh, the, you know, just all depends on the situation. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Cree. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to get in a weed control and fertilization like me or lawn care mowing business, you can go to lawncarelife.com. That's also where you'll find information on the 2025 Lawn Care Life Conference coming up February 2025. We'll see you guys in the next video.